Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the Camaro Revival. Today we're gonna jump right in, pull the motor, see what went wrong. Uh, I got a bunch of parts on order, so we're gonna go ahead and replace a bunch of stuff. But uh, before we get too far into today's video, I would like to take a moment to thank every single person that took the time to like, comment, and subscribe. It really means a lot that so many people enjoyed that video. I've been uh, working really hard on this YouTube channel and uh, it's starting to show. So thank you guys. I really appreciate that.
that work montage may not have done it justice, but that was a lot of work. Uh, I just went home, had a shower, filled my tank. Now I'm about to fill the car's tank and we're gonna see if we can get it to run. All right, we're putting fresh gasoline in the brand new tank. There we go. All right, we're hooking up the battery. No massive sparks or fire yet, so that's always good. Multiple camera angles, guys. All right, let's go inside the stinky interior. I hear a fuel pump. Let's prime the fuel pump a couple times. Make sure we're in neutral. All right, see what happens when you turn the key. All right, sounds like the fuel pump is done gurgling. Hey! There is some progress. Hey, let me check the distributor because I actually think that I didn't tighten that. Sure did not. All right, we'll be back after these technical difficulties. Let's give that a try now. this one? Oh no. Why is that slipping? So the alternator must be going full field because the pulley is red hot and it's someone that's slipping. The belt is tight. I thought it was the air pump going because it uh, kind of didn't sound right when you spun it by hand, but that one's fine. That one's cold. This one, that's too hot to touch. Power steering's fine. Water pump is fine. Yeah, it's the alternator. I can loosen the belts off and just run the water pump. That's what I'm going to do. All right, I got the belt off, the alternator. 
It spins free, so I'm not sure what's going on there. We'll have to look at it a little bit better. But I'm gonna start it back up. Temperature looks good. I do still need to set the timing properly. It's only rough set right now. Got plenty of oil pressure. Fuel gauge is working, that's good. Water temperature is starting to come up. Losing battery voltage, obviously, because the alternator is disconnected, but just gonna let it run for a few more minutes, then we're gonna shut it off for the night. I'll get the timing light out tomorrow, set the timing. We'll throw some wheels on it. Coolant is circulating, so that's good. Well, looks like we're doing good so far. Don't have any fuel leaks, don't have any coolant leaks, don't have any oil leaks. Yeah, temperature gauge is starting to come up. Still got lots of oil pressure. Perfect. All right, next step will be to tackle the interior. It is smelling a lot better since I vacuumed it out, but it's it's still has a heavy, heavy mouse presence. So we're going to try a couple products to get that out. Hopefully that works out well. I'm super happy with the motor, the way it's running. Brakes are all cleaned up and serviced. Got new tires on the rims. Got some nice new lug nuts. We're almost ready to roll. Almost there. All right, we have the new alternator. We're gonna go ahead and install that and then we're ready to hit the road for the very first time in 30 years. I wish alternators were still this easy to change. Well, unfortunately, we do not get to take this for our first drive. The clutch is not fully disengaging and I can't get it to uh, go into gear. And uh, if you have it in gear and try and start the car, the car tries to move. So 
there's uh, either something wrong with the new clutch we put in or just something wrong with the, uh, the slave or the master. So we'll have to get a look at that tomorrow. But uh, I was really excited to take it for our first drive and uh, unfortunately the car said no. want to talk about why we replaced the motor. I agree, if we could have kept the original motor, that would have been the best thing to do. But there's a couple reasons why. So there was coolant in the oil, and it might be hard to see, but if you look right here, there's this buildup, and when you pick it off, that looks like dried coolant accumulation which to me says there's a crack in the block here and there was another accumulation over here not to mention the amount of rust there was no way we were just putting a oil pump on this engine and it was gonna be good. This thing would need a full rebuild, possibly a block. So that's why we went the direction we went.